Hello, I'm Mark Nelson. I am a artist and I have a sort of a mixed background. I was a teacher and still teach. I've worked in the comic book industry. I've worked in the video game industry. I have worked for comic books. I've worked all over the things. I've worked for TSR, Dungeons and Dragons, Wizards of the Coast. Most of the work I do tends to lean a little bit on the fantastic side. So that's always been a great pleasure of mine is to design, create new worlds, create new creatures, do all this kind of stuff, and tell stories. So comics has been great, but then also with the galleries and that single page illustration as I call it, or just the single drawing can tell another story too. I have degrees in the fine arts, and it's always funny because people say, you know, well, you know, uh, gosh, we wish you had a degree in, in, in uh, sequential art or game art. And I always say, well, in 1976, there were no places that were giving out those kind of degrees. And, you know, video games hadn't even been invented back then. We were playing, if anything, a simple thing called Pong. And, you know, the whole growth of the video game industry has been incredible. But I have a BFA in printmaking from the Cleveland Institute of Art. And that was, you know, I'm still, I love printmaking. I'm a lithographer and I love making etchings and doing wood engravings and doing things like that. And that's been something that's really helped me um, define how I use stroke and mark and a lot of things in my drawings and in my ink work for comics. You know, those basic skills are things that you get and then the rest of your life is your quest that you're dealing with them. As my father, who is also an artist, said, he said it's not the two years or five years or however many years in school that makes you the artist, it's the ten years after. It's those years that you take all this information that you started to parley and how you use it and how you bring it to full you know, growth and what you do with your creativity. The one thing that people always ask is where do your ideas come from? In a lot of cases, it's very simply for me. I mean, it's I tend to be a watcher and I tend to be an observer, and you tend to sometimes ask yourself, again, we go back to that sort of who, what, where, why, when, and how. A story can be as simple as you want and talk about really simple things like the color red, or a story can be very complex and you can deal with the whole attitude of, you know, a political regime taking over, or the whole history of a new universe, or, you know, I mean, that's up a lot, you know, in a lot of cases to the author and where they want to go. It's never like you only have one idea. Usually you get so many stories running around in your head, you keep asking yourself, wow, when am I gonna, gonna end? Um, there was a student that asked me once, he said, you've designed so many creatures, how can you keep designing new creatures? and they don't look the same. Well, I mean, I look at nature, I look at the world around me, look at all the different kinds of birds, dogs, insects, things we have, and how their shapes and their form follows function. There's just an amazing wealth of images out there that we can pull from. The tone paper drawings are just a pencil drawing, and you're working with the values in black and white. If I'm working in comics, I'll be doing a pencil page first, and then I'll ink the page and then I have to go in and color it. I've also done book covers where I'm doing the pencil roughs and then I do the finished painting. Each thing has a different challenge to it. And I think that you find what you like is, for me, it's a little bit of everything. I kind of like this whole smorgasbord attitude. So sometimes I'm working on two or three of the tone paper drawings at a time. Sometimes I'm working on a painting. Sometimes I'm working on different things. So when you come to the studio, I'm always got some different things going. It's not so much what do I like best, because I enjoy it all. It's really, you know, what am I trying to say at that time and what is gonna be the best thing to help me say it? Sometimes it's nice to be limited and have someone say you have to do it this way. And then sometimes it's nice to have absolute freedom. So as an artist, you know, you're only going to limit yourself by your own sort of ego and that. And I've just found that it's a lot better to, you know, keep my mouth shut at times and listen to what people have to say. And um, you never know what kind of a gem is going to fall out that you're really going to learn something from. 
Anita will tell you the truth about me when she says, <laughs> I only get depressed about my art four times a year and each depression lasts three months. So um, we do have a lot of fun um, doing this stuff. I, I have to admit, it's something that has been a really a lifelong experience. It's been great and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. So are there better things? I don't know. But you know, it's what I do and I love it. Mark and Anita Nelson's show, Dreams, Conversations, and Separate Thoughts, will be opening at Archway Gallery, 2305 Dunlady Street, Houston, Texas, on November 2nd, 2013.